Uh, and also joining us, Emmy Award winner and accomplished producer. These two guys have done it all. It's my way. They'll be on the show. Plus, we got an exclusive interview with these guys. It's all going down tonight. Yo, it's about to get wild and crazy. It's the weekend, so turn it up, and here we go. Are you ready for some more? Welcome back, Def Jeff from Jacked Up Radio. Hey, joining us on the phone are two very accomplished DJ producers, uh, songwriters. They've been on fire with producing some incredible dance tracks in the scene right now. We're talking to Brian and Masu from My Way. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hello. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for asking. Hey, so you guys have been putting in a lot of work, releasing some hit tracks. Where does your music background come from? How did you guys even get started? Uh, let's start with Brian. So from my side, you know, my background comes from many years years of you know doing music for you know from touring uh, I used to tour with, with ska bands like the Untouchables and you know, we would open for for UB40 and Duran Duran and psychedelic fairs and the police and we, I would play this big coliseums in front of 20,000 people and that was pretty exciting <laughs> to tell you that was a that was a life-changing you know experience so having that you know doing that for for many years and then uh, remixing records you know, record companies will hire me and a partner that I had at the time. I would do dance remixes, even though I was I was in a you know ska band or pop bands. I would always listen to dance music because the dance music was just my passion. And then, and then doing the remixes, doing the dance remixes for let's say like someone like Rod Stewart to take a you know pop rock song and make it a club dance song. That was that was pretty cool. And at that time, when you did something for a major artist, it, it was a it was a big you know it's a bigger deal than maybe today that everybody's doing it. You know, uh, so that that was that part of it. Then I got into uh, music for television. I end up uh, you know getting signed to to Warner Brothers TV, and I composed uh, music for for television for all the you know major shows like Ellen DeGeneres and Bachelor and so on. And how I met Masu, just so you have the whole story here. Uh, Basically, I produced a CD called X Cultures, and and that's how I made my label. Because originally Virgin Records wanted to sign it, and then Virgin got sold, and all this political stuff. I ended up making my own label, and I sold probably close to 100,000 copies of this X Culture CD. And somehow Masood got a hold of it in Iran, and he emailed me and said uh, that you know I'm a fan. This is a, this is a great CD. It's, it's a world CD. I made music from around the world, combined them together with loops and samples, really moody. And he said, I'm a fan. And I said, well, what do you do? And he said, you know, I'm an EDM composer, artist. You know, I have worked with uh, you know, various uh, various major companies, you know, from Armada, Armand Van Buren, and he remixed, you know, a few big artists in that, in that world. And so I said, why don't you send me some tracks? So he emailed me some tracks. I listened to it. I'm like, wow, this is very very commercial EDM, like a, you know, Calvin Harris type. I said, this is great. So I brought him in and he started doing music for television. And after a while, I took a couple of these tracks and I put a vocalist on it. And I said, Masood, let's do a project together. <laughs> this is like, this is really, really cool, man. Let's, let's do this. So that's how My Way was born. So the first, you know, the name M.A. Masood and then my last name Way. And that's, that's how we came up with a my way uh, name and basically that's that's what it was you know this is all the inspiration of, of mu- doing music for all these years and music being in your blood and and really really be persistent and keep going I mean that's that's a key and what about you Masood how did you get into all this um uh, as you know, I'm in Iran, you know, uh, there is no uh, EDM music scene here, there's no club and bars, so I have to sit uh, at home and watch these uh, shows, watch the concerts over the internet, and it's, it's a very pretty slow internet actually. And I wanted to make something like that. I wanted to make a music like worldwide, I would distribute it all over the world. So in 2009, uh, I could sign a music, uh, my first music to leave it all behind to Fair Courses record label slash recordings. And yeah, after that, Army Van Buren supported Above and Beyond, Gareth Emery, uh, Paul Campbell, all these people, Fair Courses in itself. And it became my life. And after that, I uh, sent that email to Brian. 
and it changed my whole life. And now, here it is. <laughs> I, you know, and, and Brian, you mentioned earlier that you were a producer, uh, but you know, you also compose for like TV shows. I mean, and that's kind of you know, really don't think of that when you're thinking of like festivals and, and dance tracks. But you know, as what what was more challenging for you, producing dance tracks or composing for TV shows? I mean, it's not it's not like a challenge. It's just, it's just a different vibe. You know, which one do I enjoy more? Of course, you know, to do to do dance music and and go into festivals and. And like the days that I used to tour, that would be fantastic if make, we make it happen. And and me and Masood, we we do tours like that. That would be phenomenal. Right. Um, doing the music for television, it was a way of really, really making an income. Uh, without mentioning names, uh, it's not right for me to do that. But but uh, there was a, a major, major uh, person in the music industry that signed me, and I made an album, and he promised me he's going to make me the biggest. You know, producer in the world, and I just it just didn't happen, and I was really heartbroken from that whole scene. It was it was this, you know the record company was Universal Records, and, and it was huge, and they spent you know probably four hundred thousand dollars making this album, uh, and then wow. it just never came out. So it broke my heart, and I went away from the music business, which I shouldn't have, but I went away from it, meaning. From that segment of it, trying to become an artist, I said, you know, let me find the avenue for me to make money. So when someone told me, you know, maybe you should try television. So that's how I got into television, and it was really, really hard to get in. It wasn't that simple, but I think you know the idea of you know anyone that wants to make it in the music business, you have to be persistent. You know, I mean, knocking on the door for Warner Brothers Television for five years. You know them saying, you know, who is this mm. calling us for five years? <laughs> <laughs> who would call someone for five years? I mean, you you call maybe twice and you give up, right? And right. For five years, knocking on the the, the 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 doors and phones and email, and you know, finally, you know, opening the door, you know, and, and saying, you know, you can work on this one show, and I go great, and I got into it, and then, you know, now I'm like, you know, all over all over the, their 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 TV shows. And so my point was it, it was it was out of like needing to make an income from music uh, you know without you know without like completely going away from music so I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I chose to do music for TV so I can really just make that income but my passion is really not music for television even though it made me a great income right. My passion is to to be that artist, to to produce music and and to do the touring and and the whole thing that I used to do. So you guys are familiar with the artist struggles. So what piece of advice would you give to a young producer struggling to make it into the business? Is to continue to be persistent, to not to give up, and not to not to get discouraged by people saying no. Or, or they don't answer your email, your phone calls, and this and that. You know, they, everyone has their own personal issues or problems or whatever it is. But you just have to be persistent because you never know. You might, you know, just find that one person that opens the door for you. And that's, that's what it takes. You know, it really, really takes that. that. You have to be persistent. Yeah, persistence is key. So we'll have more conversations with my way coming up. Don't go anywhere. Jacked Up Radio, Def Jeff on the phone with Masood and Brian from My Way. Well, you guys have been doing this for a bit and seen the evolution of the industry and, and technology. Uh, is this whole digital era heading in the right direction for producers and artists such as yourself? I think I think it makes it easier for artists to get out there. I always thought that the challenge was promotion and marketing. That's that's like the key. But that's really always the challenge, you know. And I used to own a record company, and we used to do it, you know, traditionally with you know CDs and everything, and and distribution, and that was uh, that was easier to market, you know, to to do like listening stations and and market it that way. But today's world with digital, again, it's just a different kind of marketing, different promotion. Right. But you need to do it, you know, from the blogs to YouTube to the videos to marketing promotion. To really have the right connection, the PR, the club promotion, hire the right people. All the stuff just costs a lot of money to do and you need to do it. That's probably the only way, you know. At least is my opinion, you know. Now, I'm sure with all your years working in the industry, you've probably met a lot of interesting people. But as far as the future holds, uh, which producers or vocalists would you guys like to work with next in the studio? A producer 
I mean, yeah, we, we would love to work with someone like Calvin Harris and do a duet. <laughs> All right. I would, I would triple it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be a good thing. I, I love his music. I think he's, he's really good. I think Chain Smokers are great. I mean, commercially, you know, talking. Right. Uh, and then singers, you know, uh, I mean, Selena Gomez would be amazing if we can get her future someday. Uh, Halsey, I mean, she's got an incredible voice. Um, anyone else you can think of? Masood, you're from your opinion? Oh, maybe Martin Garrett? Ooh, yes. Yeah. You know, they're commercially very, very successful. You know, Zed. They're, they're just, they're, they're the EDM with that, with that pop flavor that I'm talking about. You right. know, that's, that's, that's where we wanted to be. That's what we like to be, you know? Well, we know they tune into the show, so if they are listening right now, let's make that happen, please. <laughs> that would be wonderful, yeah? <laughs> Maybe someday. Right? And with all your incredible music you've been producing and everything you've accomplished uh, so far, what type of mark do you guys hope to leave in the music industry? The, the best, best hope that we can have to, to rip some great hit songs that give great messages... And hopefully they become classic music that someday somebody will listen to. I mean, that would be the ultimate dream. I mean, if that happens. I mean, that's the, probably the best thing that I can that I can say, right? Right. Yeah, exactly the same. Uh, we would like to write a hit song that becomes classic and make the soundtrack of people's lives. Well, indeed, you guys are on the way to doing just that. Hey, stick around. We got plenty more conversations with My Way coming up. Oh yeah, hanging out with us on the phone, uh, Brian and Masood from My Way. So with your new track, Blame, did this track push your creativity in ways you didn't think possible? Um, yeah, we just started as an instrumental that was more like a big room kind of vibe. Uh, and uh, we actually we worked with a singer in Dallas, uh, La Voice, and she wrote a very good uh, melody line. The top line was so good that we wanted to uh, actually make a better start with it. So we just wanted to change it a little bit. and But actually we came uh, into a whole new music with um, a future bass music. And it actually happened. Yeah. I mean, as far as like creativity, we just, we constantly compose, you know? So it's like, we're not like looking to say like, we're gonna write a song called Blame. I mean, we, we keep writing, we keep composing uh, different tracks and then we send them to different singers and uh, you know, maybe they come up with some melody lines, maybe we come up with some melody lines. We just, we just bounce ideas around until we get a song that, that we think is great to release. So right now, let's say, you know, between me and Masood, uh, you know, we've been together as, as my way, I would say maybe a year, year and a half. And we've probably created maybe uh, 10, 12 tracks and recorded them with different singers. And then we have like 10 more in the pipeline, which we're working on. But, uh, but I think we, we'll finish the tracks and we listen and say, well, what should we release next type of a thing. So we, we record a lot of songs and then we just don't release them. We're very, very picky. So our strategy, you know, original strategy was to choose songs that they're more radio friendly and more commercial. Even though we're like an EDM kind of a project, but more like maybe we can follow, you know, steps of people like maybe like Chainsmoker, for example, where they took, you know, EDM and they put a pop twist into it and, and, you know, to get to get more airplay. And that has its own challenge as well. If you know with a major record company, it's very difficult to get airplay on, you know, major radio stations and so on. So that has its own challenge as well. But that's, that was original thought that let's keep it a little bit more commercial. But as we're growing and we're going, we see how difficult the commercial radio is. So we might just keep putting more music out. And don't think about it as, you know, this is a radio-friendly commercial. Let's just put it out and see what happens because then we have more releases out there. 
it's just a strategy and you just have to try it and see if it works right this is really you know it's a hard business to get into so well your new single blame is out now we definitely encourage our listeners to get a copy it is worth it trust me you're gonna love the track it is available on itunes or pretty much anywhere uh digitally online man you guys are putting in a lot of work making huge accomplishments i mean 1.1 million streams and 1.4 million youtube views on your last single which uh was titled wrong and featured on huffington's post and billboard's dance club songs track charts i mean with all that going on you know what's next for my way well basically uh what's coming up is that we are working on more songs so right now we have about 10 tracks we have about 12 tracks that is recorded already and and we are saying you know which one should we release next we have a question mark because we're just so picky right we're picking meaning not not that those songs are not good they're, i think they're all great songs it's just a matter of being picky meaning taking the edm with a little bit of a pop flavor to make it radio friendly that's that was our thinking at all times um you know we have a lot of that stuff and then some of them are really really pop i mean uh very pop radio so that part of that pop radio is very very expensive to promote as well as i we probably need a a, a major record company so i think once we get a deal let's say with sony or someone like that that can take it to a next level then i think we'll release that those songs which i think they're they could literally they could be like top 10 pop charts they, they could go to number one i mean I, I really have a good feeling about it um but at the same time you know that's our thinking but but maybe the, the 12 that we have is maybe it's a little bit too pop so we're working on 10 more right now which we we already finished the tracks and we're you know giving it to various singers to to write some nice melody line and lyrics on and that's what we're working on so i think between now and they say two months from now i think we'll have you know 20 choices and we we'll probably pick you know one every two three months and say you know what let's let's release it much faster than uh the last time that we did wrong because we waited like a whole year you know so that's the strategy. Well, definitely. We cannot wait. Uh, so if anyone wants to keep tabs of all your releases, uh, upcoming shows, uh, and just keep tabs of everything that you guys are going to be working on, where can they do that online? So social media at My Way Official uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube channel, and SoundCloud is My Way. So it's M-A-W-A-Y-Y. -Y. My way. Well, once again, thank you so much, Brian Masu, for coming on. Any last words to the listeners? I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff, and thanks for all the listeners. Yeah. Thank you for all the listeners for Jacked Up Radio. We really appreciate you. I appreciate you following us. Thank you very much for your time, Jeff. Hope to talk to you soon. Hey, thanks again, guys. Man, it was definitely a pleasure talking to Ma Wei. These guys are so down to earth and humble. And also, don't forget, accomplished composers and producers, Emmy Award winners, and receiving support from top producers. Yeah, that's how you do it. Hey, stick around because we're not done with Ma Wei. We still got a guest set from these guys. Uh, that's all coming up, so stay with us.